Oh, it's a new week with your legends, Ginger Lynn. Christy Cannon coming live at you. From Who Let the Girls Out, Your Girls. You know, there was this beautiful Canyon, era in Ginger time. Lynn. I think I said that. Did you? I do believe I did. I wasn't Don't make me rewind. Attention. I wasn't paying attention to you. Were you were smelling me. <laughs> I was you were sniffing me. <laughs> there was a time when we joined the adult business in that beautiful, glorious era of the 80s. And you know what? There are still a few of us hanging around, and we wrangled one, we snared one in today on Who Let the Girls Out, that not just your girl, Christy Canyon, but your other girl, Ginger Lynn, had the pleasure, mm. the honor of working, and I'm going to air quote, working with <laughs> the one and only Herschel Savage. Welcome to Who Let the Girls Out with your girls. Hey. <laughs> What a pleasure to be here. I, so great to talk. So great to talk to the both of you. We miss you so much. I was just telling Christy on our break that of all the people in the industry, you're one of the few people, especially the few men, that I consider a friend. You know, we don't see each other all the time. We don't talk to each other all the time. But I really do see you as a friend. And what I don't know, what Christy and I don't know, we don't know much about you. <laughs> Here's the... And that's the way I like it. Oh, well, we're going to pull it out of you oh, thanks, today. Thanks for calling in, Hirsch. we got to go now. <laughs> Here's Who the interesting... The Who let the secrets out? You are in about... You, you, you guys truly are legends. It's like to be able to have worked with the both of you and become your friends yes a great honor in my life. And honestly. you know, here's something else that's very interesting, Herschel. You and Ginger and I have known each other. I think I worked with you in Orifice Party in about late 84, early 85. Ginger's worked with you in that same time frame. Neither one of us, you were very private and you were a very uh, to yourself kind of guy offset. Neither one of us fucked you offset. How the fuck did that happen? <laughs> He would to run away. Great, to my greatest chagrin. <laughs> but um, you know, honestly, uh, I I was married at the time, happily married, I should say. And I, I honestly, I'm not super proud of it, but I was never really a player. I never hit women up for their numbers. Can we get together this weekend? I just didn't do that. So I guess that made me an anomaly in the industry. You know but, what? It uh, it, it makes you amazing in the industry. Not and a rarity. A rarity, yeah, because most guys that are in the industry, they're hung dogs. They want to fuck all they can all the time. And the fact that you were married and you went to work and you worked and you went back to your wife, that's like, you know, you go, oh, I love Chris Helmsworth. He's, a, he's, he's gorgeous. He could fuck anybody he wants, but he doesn't. He stays with his wife and his kids. You know, it, it's just, you're that good kind of guy. It was a job. Uh, the amazing thing was my wife was cool with it. <laughs> Very cool amazing. with it. We went out to dinner with your wife. I was dating a producer, and we actually went out to dinner a couple of times. She was absolutely beautiful and gorgeous. But we've got you now, and I love how both of us have known you for, oh, Lord, dare I admit, Jesus. Six, 37 wow. years? Almost four fucking decades. Almost, almost, almost 40, man. <laughs> and wow. crazy, Herschel Savage. Oh, my God. Well, take us back in time to pre-Ginger Lynn, pre-Christy Candy. No, not your childhood, because we don't give a flying fuck about that, baby. But you actually started in the business. <laughs> I hope it was a good one. That's all I'll say. But you started in the business before we were even in the business, Herschel. Tell us a little bit about what it was like back then. Didn't you film in New York most of the time in the beginning? Yeah, I started in New York um, in uh, 1976 during our bicentennial. Uh, and, uh, I, 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 you know, for me, it was uh, since I, I, I didn't have a strong relationship to 9 to 5, I needed to find something that I could do. <laughs> And I did. So, and you I just did. went, "Hey, I'm good at fucking. I'm good." At, did I, you? You know that was my. I, I was. I was. I was able to do it. Let's no see. Who was what in my the room, career who, opportunities? Even if was screaming at me if I was bleeding from my left arm. Oh off. my god! You so were always reliable. I was fortunate that way. Okay, so but, take uh, us back. Yeah. 
to yeah. being your first time. How did you find yourself living on, not on, but in New York? I was going to say on the streets. You weren't on the streets. What were you doing where the light bulb moment, that aha moment hit you? And you said, slinging burgers, whatever you were doing, tell us that's not my, my future. What the fuck do I do to pay my rent? I'm still asking myself that question, first thing. But um, I was I was dating a woman. It was a semi serious relationship, a friendship with benefits, and she, and I was uh, I was struggling financially. I I didn't really want to be doing any job nine to five. Right. And she she recommended that I speak to a a boyfriend of her friend who was in the industry. So I did. That was, was that was our was he, did he, I, would, I was going to say, does he have one finger upside the nose? Is he a mafia guy? <laughs> you were, because we had to meet mafia back then. Tell us good stories about that. About mafia? Tell me the mafia stories. Tell us the dirt. Tell us what uh, poor well, life. You know, I, I, Don't tell us names. One, in one particular instance, there was a guy named Bill Lux. He was a, he was a guy that used to shoot stuff in his basement in Brooklyn and put himself in the scene. He was able to function that way. <laughs> nice guy, and he had a he had a a, a collaborator a, named S S Scotty or S uh, poor Smitty. I'm sorry, my memory fails me. Anyway, bottom line, he uh, he mouthed off to a mob guy and was blown away, and no one ever found his body. That, that, that happened. To, you know, there was, um, you know, Sammy the Bull Gravano basically oh, wow. took care of the top porn guy in New York in the 80s. I mean, he was blown away. D.B. Bernardo, I believe. I'm, I'm talking out of my ass here. I don't have any solid information on the mob and what they did. But uh, they, they, they Make it a full buy the bookstores. And the, the bookstores ran for not at least in New York. They, they definitely did up until probably the 90s when it was just too out of the box and everyone with a camera was started, you know, forming a company. But you were in it in the nitty gritty New York 70s. Herschel Savage on with us. Ginger Lynn, Christy Cannon. So your booty call back in the 70s was like, oh, talk to a friend's friend to get in the adult business. Like, what is your first thought? Like, the what business? Or were you like, what are you fucking kidding? I well, can't they be. Use, they didn't use the word the word adult. What they say? <laughs> porn. It was it was porn flakes. Porn flakes. You know, porn flakes. Yeah, some some like that. Porn movies. And whatever. Were you so like... it was like you know it was cash and carry. I mean, you do a loop, which was like a twenty minute scene, no sound, just fucking fifty bucks. So in 1976, 50 bucks was you know reasonably decent money yeah usually uh, in cash but, but but overall i gotta tell you i mean i moved to california in 1979 because i couldn't stomach the industry in new york it was disgusting but the it? mob and the uh, and the immigrants that ran little porn shops behind iron gates with doberman pinches barking at you to <laughs> walk in it was disgusting. It man. really was. I, I, it, it was. It was so depressing. I mean, Ginger, you 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 created, in a sense, a new golden age. I mean, you didn't get to see that ugliness. Hopefully, I I believe you did. I, I made mean, one. Back, I made you know? one trip to New York, and I left uh, in a helicopter with mobs people uh, trying to get me out of my room, uh, off the roof of a hotel, and ended up on. Uh, the monkey business, Gary Hart's boat with the owner of Guest Jeans and about 20 people who did nothing but coke, drink, and fuck for like two weeks in the Hamptons. Oh my so God. So my how New fun. York. Well, that's, that's a lot more attractive than what I just put. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take, I'll take that that's how right. bad my experience was, Hers, It was horrible. Okay, it's, your porn experience <laughs> may have been bad. With cocaine, I don't know. Well, it started off in the porn, and that wasn't working, but it ended up beautiful. Yeah. I love the monkey business. See, unlike you two, because you started a year, Ginger, before me, you a couple more years before me, I never shot anything in New York. I never went there for work, except for in the 90s, dancing or bookstore signings. Right. But I never shot video, film, loops, whatever, in New York. So I, don't have, I was a total porn valley girl. First, did well, you? That's, you? You were fortunate because, uh, for, for one thing, the two of you are beautiful women. So you obviously would be treated 
with kid gloves for the most part if you were taken into New York to do a shoot. You're going to be treated in a special way. But uh, I, I, I think overall, you were protected to just be a Valley Girl shooter. Yeah, I never, yeah. never had an issue, never had to walk off the set. Very lucky that way. So now you move. Very you're, lucky. You're That's comp- amazing. Well, before, it really is. Be, before he moved, you did loops. Did you do feature films? Did, did yeah, yeah, in New yeah, York I did as feature well. Films. I did feature films. I um, I, there was a, a group of brothers that did B movies. I forgot what their name. The Something Brothers. They weren't porno. They were like hard R. Works for them. I studied with great teachers in New York to become an actor to begin with, and I sort of threw that dream away, you know, for the quick, easy money. So that's one of my regrets. But, but, um, uh, yeah, yeah I, but what regrets yeah. can you have? You were a coxman. Yeah, you were a coxman for your entire life. But, I did it the opposite way. I did the porn, then the mainstream. And let me ask you something because it seems, from my recollection, it seems like a lot of the guys in the 70s started out as mainstream actors you are bola harry reams um jamie gillis jerry butler pt uh, paul thomas i think even ron jeremy maybe a lot of them <coughs> started out excuse me as mainstream actors that found okay i'm not getting a lot of acting roles but damn this porn thing is good and porn back in the 70s as people know there was act you needed your acting chops so you, there you come, there Arbola comes, there Jerry Butler comes, and it was like probably the porn directors couldn't believe how lucky they were. They get a good-looking guy that can get it up on cue, come on cue, and they could fucking act. Right. I don't know and- if they ever believed they were lucky. I mean, I, I, I feel in many circumstances we were looked down upon. Oh, a lot of uh, A lot of directors, you know, felt superior to us and didn't see us as legitimate talent. They were appreciative, of course, that we could get the job done, but I never felt an overwhelming amount of respect. Um, uh, I had appreciation for the fact that I was really good working sex scenes where I didn't waste any time, didn't screw up, you know? Let me um, me let our audience know the difference or what it really means to have been a porn star in your day. There was no such thing as Viagra. The only men were real men who could get it up, come on cue, fuck girls. Sometimes they didn't want to fuck. They still were able to go through with it. You are. A- well, I can guarantee you. I can guarantee you there were girls we didn't want to fuck. <laughs> okay. In the 70s in New York, it was, you know, we, we were better looking than the women. Too. Okay. <laughs> Speaking of girls and fucking them on film, Herschel Savage, who was the first girl that popped your porn cherry do you remember the name of her i don't remember her name i have her visualized in my mind i know she was uh i i'm not gonna go into her background but um that's private but um yeah i was i was hired to do a loop are you familiar with ted snyder you guys i don't uh, know he might have died before i know you the name came into the business. that's why i have a 12 inch single out thanks to teddy oh snyder. <laughs> <laughs> That's hysterical. Okay, so what about him, Herschel? So he was my first guy. Got for Jason Russell, who was married to Tina Russell. They were pretty famous in the 60s, 70s. Shot John Holmes a lot. So I got for Ted Snyder, who was a Jewish uh, mafia-affiliated guy. So mafia-affiliated? To be a Jew and to be affiliated with the mob, you got to be pretty nasty. So at any rate, this was Ted Snyder. He was a psycho, cocaine using, uh, got his air air pilot license, crashed four times type of guy. Always dangerous. His house was full of Uzis. He he was dating this woman who was not in the business, very attractive, redheaded woman. And he would invite guys in the business over. I make this a short story. And and wa- and invite them to fuck her while he was watching it. And, and while they were <laughs> fucking her, he'd come up behind them with a thirty eight revolver and mm-hmm. say, "You want to fuck my girl?" He would do this to these guys. This is the kind of psycho he was. Now, he also invited me, but he, he never pulled out the gun. He, we were friends for some reason. I don't know. Anyway, he was killed in a drug bust going bad and that, probably i i remember when so he died yeah that's so right i went to an apartment in midtown manhattan tons of crew and i'm like oh what the hell i you know i 
had no idea. Apparently, three guys before me fucked up, couldn't do it. They say, you're up, kid. I go to the bathroom. I probably told the story so many times. I'm sorry to bore I mean, you. We've never heard it. And you're, you've yeah, never yeah. told it on who let the goddamn girls out. So go, Herschel Savage. <laughs> Okay, so um, so I went into the bathroom, and this was an upscale Midtown Manhattan apartment. Okay, I go into the the restroom, and you know, and I've never done anything like this. I pull my penis. I never pull my penis out in any inappropriate manner right. anymore. So I pull my penis out, close the door, and it's the size of you know uh, the, the a third of my pinky. I'm going, oh my god, I'm not gonna be able to do this. This is crazy, and I'm perspiring at the same time. <laughs> Bottom line, so I come out. They 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 have this loop set up where my quote unquote wife is having cereal i come out in a suit and tie uh, to 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 uh, join her for breakfast she starts peeling a banana <laughs> ironically and then pulls my fly down you know <laughs> and i instantly got hard and it was like the crew started laughing literally they burst out into laughter look he got hard he got hard <laughs> Humiliated now, humiliated now. Finally, I find out I did a good thing. So that's how my career started. Oh, and look at you all these years later on Who Let the Girls Out. I (laughs) love your stories. So then you move, you go to... Uh, you go to Los Angeles, but while you were in New York and you, you no, got I went to San Francisco. Oh, so, I, I oh of course, that was the huge place before Porn Valley. But while you were in New York, I'm just, I'm so curious myself. Did you know the heavy hitters? Did you work on sets with the PTs, with the Jamie Gillises? Was- you know, I never worked with PT until I met him in San Francisco in 79. Never met him. I, you know, had he worked in New York, I was unaware of it. But right. I worked with Jamie Gillis, you know, uh, the guy that used to be on the soap opera, what was his name? Uh, he won a lot of awards. He was actually gay, but he pulled off a porn career. Do you know who I'm talking about? No. Let me ask you a question. You might know. Well, Eric Edwards, obviously. Yeah. I worked with him. Ron Jeremy came in two years after me. He used to follow me around the set asking me questions about, you know, he was kind of annoying even then. What about John uh, Holmes? What about John Holmes? (laughs) What about John Holmes, sweetheart? Who? John Holmes. I met John Holmes. Um, uh, uh, I worked with him actually three times. I did a, 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 a four-way scene with him with Marilyn Chambers. The first time I met him was on a shoot in New Jersey. I was brand new, and I was I was brought into a trailer to introduce myself to him. Somebody wanted to introduce me, so I went over to him. He's sitting in the back of the. Did trailer you know who you. he was? I'm sorry. Did you know who he was? Not really. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's how much I knew about pornography. It was like Playboy magazine for me. So, uh, so uh, at any rate, so he's sitting in the back. He's got his arms around two really hot young women, and he's got this huge diamond pinky ring. And I, and I said, nice to meet you. And he said, nice to meet you. And he said something nice, and that was it. That was it. So I did my scene. I never, I didn't see him again. I found out that shoot, which was, was done in a, beauty parlor after hours <laughs> was was caught by the police. They were all busted on that shoot, oh, and I wasn't. Yeah. So that was my first of all. I was never busted on a shoot, amazingly <laughs> enough. So That's crazy. And yeah. then... Did you ever get close to being busted? Because you were in it for a long time. And then when you went to San Francisco, that became the hot spot for companies getting busted. <laughs> I, 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 well, I, I've honestly been very fortunate that I was never taken downtown or anything else. I mean, this it, it really is amazing in a way. I, I, I uh, you know, I, I was just, there was, and once I uh, retired from the industry in 87, that was my first retirement. I was, se- I <laughs> we was, all selling, have gay, I was selling gay films. You were there's selling a, gay books, films? There was a bookstore in, um, West Hollywood called Circus of Books. It's on Santa Monica Boulevard. You might have been familiar yeah. with it anyway. Anyway, the people that ran it were very straight Jewish people that just made a lot of money selling stuff. So they 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 had a whole career with Jeff Stryker. They promoted Jeff Stryker's films and he was he was making a ton of money. You he know, Jeff Stryker is favorite. Yeah, my brother's favorite. And for those <laughs> who don't know, Jeff Stryker was the number one male gay porn oh, star throughout the nineties. Wasn't 
Even late 80s, I lied. He came in about mid eight, uh, late 80s. He late was 80s, huge. Yeah. So he, was, he was having a striker force. He, he, he came into the office one day in his Corvette with his little dog, and um, and I was supposed to give him a check. The check was for 40 grand. This was like a regular check. Yeah, he just come in for 40 grand. So it was like, wow. But uh, one thing, that, one thing you don't know about Jeff Stryker, too, um, is he at least claimed to be straight doing gay sex. He was the top. You yeah. Know? So so um I I witnessed one time he was apparently a martial arts expert at one of the conventions in Las Vegas one of the top uh producers or you know distributors of porn started calling him a fag and all this mm-hmm. kind of shit and he had his friends mocking him and Jeff Stryker and his friend beat the shit out of these guys. <laughs> I witnessed it. It was it was it was like a UFC fight and it was just, it was, it was impressive. No one ever mocked them again. I'll oh, my, I and I guarantee so. the cops were never called. Oh, no, no. No. A, a, a fight never goes on for that long. It, you know, it's funny. It's, I don't even know if it was broke. It, it, nobody broke it up eventually. The, the, the people who fought Stryker and his friend or friends were brutalized. So, I mean, they were, they were semi-conscious. So there was nothing to break That's up. That's crazy. A certain point. Uh, right. That's a, but he was great. He was adorable. But now, Herschel Savage on with us. You're in San Francisco. You make that change because before Los Angeles became the hotspot, it was San Francisco with the Mitchell brothers. Ginger, you did a lot of yeah. films up there. I worked up in San Francisco quite a bit. And so you yeah, get there. I again. San Francisco. You get great. there, and what do you think? Like... Oh, what do man. I think? All right, here, here we go. So, uh, so I'm uh, I'm I'm staying at my sister's apartment because she was she was doing her master's degree at San Francisco State University, and so she agreed to you know put me up in her living room. I, I, so I, I tried to get some work. I tried to call around. I don't know, Jerry Abrams. This is a blast from the past. This was a guy oh, that used nice. to shoot loops. I remember Page Jerry. 40, 50. Do you remember Jerry Abrams? I he do remember a, Jerry Abrams. Like 300 pounds. Very okay, well. So this is the first yeah. guy I shot And um, it, the bottom line on my career in San Francisco is th- I, I, was, I was not viewed in a positive way by the existing talent, and they wanted to blow me out. They why? They didn't want me to succeed. No, I'm, I'm telling you the truth. But why uh, is they, that? They, they, I, I'm not going to name names here, but there was a... There was, there was, I was not getting work. You know, either they were spreading bad rumors about me. I'm, look, I got along with everyone, and I always worked well. So right. uh, it, I, I, I struggled for six months to get steady work. And it's literally, I was living on Bud's ice cream sundaes. Mm. And oh. I'll, t- I'll tell you, I look great. <laughs> 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 I never looked better. But uh, it, it, it finally came to a point where um, Milton Ingley, who you know, I'm sure. Do you know, remember Uncle Milton? Milty, yeah. Uh, okay, all right. So he, in one of uh, the scenes that we happened to do together, we wound up doing a lot of DPs together because I was a good bottom and he was a good top, you know, this before he really blew up. So he said to me, Ma, I have a room for rent in my place in Sausalito. So I said, he, she says, are you interested? I said, absolutely. So I lived with Milton for about eight months, and all, right on Bridgeway on the water in Sausalito. That was great. And Beautiful. And um, uh, right before then, I was do. Uh, I, uh, he he used the house in in Sausalito uh, uh, quite extensively to to rent for porn shoots, and I was hired to do a scene, and literally. I was in the middle of a scene when most of the guys that tried to blow me out were at the edge of the room with their arms folded, staring me down. Seriously, this was actually happening. And as was my want, didn't give a fuck. And I did the scene, and they never bothered me again. And from that point, I started working regularly with the Mitchell brothers and and Sweet Erotica. It became a really good time financially and just to, you know, it was like a magical time to be in it was, San Francisco in the 1980s. It was yeah. beautiful. Oh, and it to was, live in Sausalito? Oh, my oh God. it's beautiful. Amazing. And now, after those guys were trying to bully you with their arms crossed, Herschel, and then you're like, fuck that shit. I got this beautiful girl, or I'm going to imagine she's beautiful, whatever the story was. You could do your scene. 
And they're like, okay, he fucking, he did it. We tried to strong arm him. He's part <laughs> of us. Did you see them on sets now that you started working for everybody? And was it all like nothing ever happened? Like, okay, we're all yeah, friends now. Yeah, you can't get photos and stuff. It was obnoxious. I mean, I suffered trying to get work. I mean, I left New York because I couldn't stand the, the, the uh, you know, there was, there was a director named Chuck Vincent in New York. I'm sure you remember him, I Ginger. worked for Chuck. Yes, I did. Okay, so I never once worked for Chuck Vincent. I did a what mainstream that, what movie that tell, What does that tell you? Either uh, he, he got that I wasn't gay or whatever. I don't know. I just was never <laughs> in that loop. Oh, yeah, yeah, was yeah. Was he gay? I see. I never so, worked for him. Yeah, he, he was, was before my yeah, time. Like, I didn't know he was gay. I only worked for him on the mainstream. Yeah, thing. he was pretty well known, you know. So, <laughs> uh, you know, in any, so I'm, I'm, I'm sure he approached quite a few guys. Who, for some reason, he didn't want to work with me, and I never had an altercation or a verbal dispute with him in any way. I just wasn't his type, you know. So, uh, and. If I was gay, I'm sure I would have been his type. I wasn't bad looking at 24. But how interesting. He's always been good looking. But it's interesting that he based his choices of men on if he was attracted to them or not. You would think. I mean, he, I mean, I guess he was attracted to Ron Jeremy because he was his biggest star. <laughs> <laughs> That's hysterical. Uh, oh, my God. That is so funny. So there you are, though. You're in San Francisco. And then you get that next wave of your career and locations in Porn Valley, which is where I met you, which is, I do believe, where Ginger met you and we both worked with you. So did you kind of, because from my recollection, when I got in, in 1984, San Francisco wasn't as hot of a hot spot as no, it was. It, it's, it's funny. I mean, I met my my wife in 1983 and we got married the same year and then we moved from San Francisco. I mean, she was living in L.A. I had an apartment in San Francisco in, in uh, on Dolores Street. Uh, we moved. We moved to, to L.A. because it was drying up. I mean, they, they the heat was off L.A. shoot, so it just made sense to move to L.A., which is what I did. And, and a lot of the companies, things, things really got good. a lot of the big film companies, such as the Mitchell Brothers and a few of the others, shut down when video came around. And then video popped up hard and fast in Porn Valley, also known as Los Angeles. I, I, I don't know what, I, I have no idea why the Mitchell brothers would have shot, you know, closed down. They were so popular. I mean, plus I, the, the theater made tons of money. You I mean, know, so. knowing both of them, I really think that they loved making films. They were filmmakers. You know, when I worked for them, I got real scripts. That on page nine. Oh, yeah, no, they, they treated me so well. They I love were, the Mitchell brothers. They uh, were, I have yeah. nothing bad to say about it. It's, uh, it's tragic what happened to oh them. Oh, my God. They were one of the I greatest was... clubs to dance at in the 90s as well. They treat, they had bathrobes with did, our names did, did, on did, it. Did you dance there, Christy? Yes, several times. Many oh, times. I about bet, three times. so much fun. They were great. They were a great. I never did films for them. Um, because that was already dried up by the time I got in 1984. But I know Ginger loved working for them. They were, so, they were great. They, they treated us like gold. Man. So oh you and your yes. wife, you pack up and you say, honey, let's move to Los Angeles. Work is well, she was great. already She was already there. So it was a matter of just finding a mutual place for the both of us. Plus, my mother had lived there for many years. I was the last of my family to move west. So um, we eventually wound up... Uh, finding a place, then finding another place. And I've been here ever since, since 83. Did she Amazing. ever get jealous of, of your work? I mean, it has, I, I, I couldn't my, be my, in a relationship. Yes. No, she was pretty, uh, I said it earlier, she was amazing. She really, she, um, she also, she once said to me, just don't fall in love. I love that. that. Okay. Yeah. Good for her. Yeah, she, but she, but she saw who I was. I mean, you know, we, I was, I, I, I came home. I yeah. mean, I enjoyed being with her. She was, um, and it was, she me, how much sex do you need? Really? I, mean, I know if you're a single guy in the business, you're going from one woman, you know, yeah. as you mentioned earlier, Christy, that wasn't, you know, I, you know, I like to create relationships, you know, I love sex, obviously, mm -hmm. but, um, relationships, friendship, 
fun to be with each other. So this is these are the memories that last, you know. This oh, is, completely. Is, yeah. You've yeah. always given off that vibe. Always given off the friend vibe, which is fun and though. I loved it. I I had no idea you were married. Or were you married when you were in, in L.A. Then? Yeah. Oh well, yeah, you moved. You yeah. still were. He's the one I met oh, her. Okay. She was yes, yes, yes. Beautiful. I was married twice. First time, eighty three, and then. Second time, two thousand one. Okay, I oh, knew, okay. That's where I got confused. I met the eighty three girl. I met her in eighty five, I think, with you and Michael that that time at dinner. Just lovely and beautiful, and I love it that she wasn't jealous. So then, then, she then was, she was pretty well adjusted, Matt. I think I think part of it. She was a Mexican woman, um, and her her father. They were ran rancheros man i mean they really lived in the sticks so when i got there the year before they just got an electricity it was like a cultural shock for me but the father always left the house for two weeks sprints to go fuck and the mother <laughs> she told me my, my wife she said my mother would just say just take a shower Oh, oh my god so, 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 so and i certainly wasn't as aggressive as that i mean i i remember Hershey, you know what, sweetheart? Even, we need Hershey. Like this, but, uh, yes. We need to take a five second break. We Don't just have to for our editors. Okay. Just give us right. five seconds, please. Thank you. We are talking to Herschel Savage. Yes, we are. And oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> no. Oh, Chris Buchanan, Gingerland, your show is our show, Your Girls, Who Let the Girls Out? On every Wednesday, if you want to hear us, listen to us on any of your favorite podcast channels. If you want to follow us, Christy Canyon 11. That's Twitter, that's Instagram, that's Sex Panther, that's OnlyFans, all the good places. You can follow me on all the good places as well. Blame it on Ginger. Don't go anywhere. We will be right back for our Patreon members. If you're not a Patreon member, you're not going to know what happens in the second hour, which is when we get a little crazy. So stick with us. Go over to patreon.com slash let the girls out. We'll be right back with more of Herschel Savage.